All right, what's going on everyone? We're here for another batch of testing. These are not reviews, I am not sponsored. I am probably biased. Uh, and it costs money. So I'm gonna try and be good about it. I'm gonna not destroy these things if possible. I do wanna actually use them. $150, talked about this in one of the other videos. Um, I bought that on Friday. I've cooked it five or six times and it's looking great. There's, you know, no visible defects or anything. Clings like a charm. I cooked a kilo of bacon in it last night, letting let it sizzle for ages. Poured it all out, wiped it down, perfect. Uh, and this one, I was looking for basically the equivalent, so I'm not sure if you can see the similarities there, but <clears throat> uh, went out on Sunday and at our local Kmart, saw a similar handle shape. Thought, you know what? 150 bucks, 149 bucks. Now, don't get me wrong, I got it 50% off. Uh, they've got like four more there at that price, so get to your local good guys, see if they're doing that deal. KitchenAid, 25 centimeter something, something, try something. Oh, this Kmart one. So it's also anodized aluminium. This doesn't have steel or copper in it like this one does, as far as I know. Uh, uh, hard anodized aluminium, two layer non-stick Teflon coating, riveted stainless steel handle. So it's good for induction, it's good for ceramic, for gas. Uh, it's good in your oven. Now the things I was looking for specifically, I've got a bigger one, and I know that makes it a little bit unfair, but we're not really looking at the size, it's more about the quality. Um, specifically the coating, because these handles seem pretty, pretty similar. This one's a bit more of a brushed stainless steel, holds better. This one feels a bit smoother, possibly show defects a bit more. But they're both riveted, which is important to me. Uh, the Teflon coating covers the rivets, so that means it's not going to get a, you know, wobble to it as time goes on as the screw starts to rust out. Um, they have a high wall, so you can really slosh it about a bit. Now this one's got a bit more of a slope, but it does have a point at which it feels 90 degrees like this one does. It's also a bit graduated, so you can kind of get the spatula into that if you're scooping out a pancake or waffle or omelette or something. Um, yeah, they're the key things. So non-stick, anodized aluminium, so it doesn't get that warp or you know, bow in the middle over time and rock about when you're cooking. Riveted handle. Um, and just, I want to say it's good to cook in. Now, if this, I don't expect $20 to compa com uh, compare to 50, uh, $150. It might do though. But what I think I'm going to do is probably start using this when we go camping. There's two to four of us that go camping. And, uh, well, let me go get, no, oh, where is it? Yeah, let me get the camping fry pan. I'll show you why. One second, well, 10 seconds. This thing has taken a beating. It is scratched and dented and warped and charred, and that's about as clean as it gets. That's me cleaning the living daylights out of it. Um, so I think it's about time to retire this. I might take the handle off, which is naturally, uh, yeah, a little bit rattly. Just use it in the garage for something, I don't know, storage. Um, but also it's hard to cook for three people in this. It's 25 centimeter, I think a 32 centimeter is gonna make a hell of a difference. But for now, <clears throat> That's not our concern. What we want to see, how these perform. We've got two tests that I'm going to do. I've seen this perform before. I have used this a few times. I haven't used this one. It does appear to already have some little nicks and scratches though, so I'm guessing they're just not stored as well. This was hanging on the shelf like that. This came in a box with foam and padding and, you know, uh, I guess about $130 worth of safety in there. I'm going to do two tests. Molten cheese, kind of like cheese biscuits afterwards, which I'll be eating. And we're going to candy up some sugar in it. Um, those things both stick quite easily to non-stick pans. I'm sure there's other things I can try. You're welcome to leave any suggestions if you want to see them. Put through a burn test. Um, I've closed the door as well and opened the window because I expect that there is going to be a fair bit of smoke. And the smoke alarms do like to make a bit of a screaming sound from time to time. Now let's just unlock this one. <clears throat> and we'll try to give them roughly the same amount of time. You can see that, yep. <clears throat> so, this one's got some warmth in it. Uh, kind of say it's got about a 30 second lead time. So, give that 30 seconds. We get our slice of cheese going. 
Shoot, I've got three slices, one for each pan and one for my gob. But I didn't. <clears throat> now this is semi-processed cheese. Um, so it should stick a bit. I mean, fully processed would really stick if I got that going on. But, no sorry, fully processed wouldn't stick. Real cheese would stick, but we'll see how this goes. So if I plop her in, that's gone. That's lit. Drink in hand. Let's watch this melt, see how it turns out. Now one important thing as well, when you got any Teflon coating, get silicon. You can get a cheap silicon set like this. They are firm, they're durable, they will not scratch your shit, and that's important. Uh, a lot of the plastic ones, especially the cheaper plastic ones, will still scratch it. The exceptions are, maybe if you're making omelets or something, you take away plastic forks, and they're generally all right, because they don't have enough force in them to scratch it without you actually snapping the fork in half. Uh, so when I'm making omelets, for example, I've got a little fork in there and I'm wishing up some curds with the fork before I let it uh, set. Now I reckon we'll give this until it's brown and smoke's coming off it. I'm not going to move the fry pan until that point. And then we'll see how easily it just slides off down onto that plate over there in preparation to be consumed by me shortly after. Either my nose is blocked or this cheese has no scent. Probably the former. Starting to brown up the sides there. I'm not sure if that's a mild reaction or not when it's cheese. When it's meat it is, and it's pretty interesting. Uh, Dan Souza on What's Eating Dan, a channel on uh, playlist on America's Test Kitchen, does actually a really, really good discussion on that. Link in the description. God damn, that looks tasty. It's kind of hypnotizing too. Better not run out of gas. I think a lot more in the garage, but you get a fair bit of cooking out of one of these gas tanks. Um, I use this in for melting down lead and whatnot in the garage. Uh, does a good job actually. You go through a lot of fry pans and saucepans doing that. Um, interestingly, I've got a mini muffin mold. I pour the lead into mini. All right, now it smells good. Pour the lead into mini muffins, and the Teflon in the mini muffin mold is still good. So it's being, it's having molten lead poured into it, and it hasn't faulted. Trying to get some smoke come off this now. Might see if we can keep going a bit long until it's wholly browned. Yeah, so I'm making the third cartridge and I've used it pretty extensively. Maybe maybe half hour worth of cooking out of each cartridge. Maybe I'll time it, make a video out of it. A half an hour of a flame burning. Put your money on when it's gonna end. Or yeah. Gamble responsibly. This just gets, looks better and better as the seconds go by. Now we are running out of actual cookable material here. When this last little bit in this corner goes, I think we'll take it off the heat. Put it down for a moment. Get my little bit of wood over here. Oh yeah, that's smelling pretty burnt. All right, so I'm gonna say four minutes. It's burning. My smoke alarm is probably going to go off any second, so I'm putting this over near the window for a moment. There we go. Take the scent outside. Please, it's not taking the scent outside. Why well, aren't you? There we go. Little bit of oil coming off it. Alright, a lot of oil coming off it. It's definitely not adhered though. It's moving about. Oh. And, uh,. Wow. Oh yeah, just soak that oil straight back up. Let's put that down. Turn this off for a moment. Gonna be the best option here. Let's just get a bit of paper towel to soak up that oil. There we go. 
Oh, look at that go. Can you see that from that frame? Yeah, you can. That has got some oil going on. Delicious, delicious oil. Now that's still hot. There's still oil in it. Not enough that it's really a concern. This, um, just a bit of rag. Slightly damp. Wipes down nicely. All right, let's get this out of the way. <clears throat> See if we can safely set it down oh, over there. Don't melt anything else. Oh, shit. Don't knock anything over either. There we go. <clears throat> now, we gave that one a good 30 seconds. This one we won't because it is cool. That's lit. Let's cook this. Too much my alarm starts screaming. I'm wondering if this being a thinner base is going to transfer heat a lot quicker. Um, I'm wondering what I should sit this on when it's finished cooking. Oh, this room is smoking. That, that smoke alarm is going to go off, and this window isn't doing diddly. Start to melt now. Little bubble going on in the corner. Uh, definitely. Whoop. Bloody hell. How long was that? Minute, minute and a half. I haven't fast forwarded anything so you'll be able to tell in the time. And just pretend you've added it to that lap timer. This appears to be cooking. A lot quicker. <clears throat> God damn, look at that oil coming out. It seems like the oil is actually coming out of the cheese quicker or leaching out. Oh, why is it running further away from the cheese in this pan? The oil wants to get away more. This is splattering a little bit too, but that might just be a little bit of water or moisture that was left from somewhere and this is browning up a lot quicker uh, I don't think this is going to last four minutes or I guess three minutes on the lap timer or so we're going to get two two and a half maximum that's possibly because of how quickly that heat has transferred meanwhile that's uh, what's going on here oh that is one very very delicious looking cheese biscuit move that to the side I up all of this delicious oil. Just so it's not going down the drain, really. That is burning through incredibly quick. At this rate, I reckon we'll be lucky to make it to um, two minutes now. What's going on? It's hard to get sitting center because it's that bloody big. Ah, oh, for Christ's sake. Alright, it's on the piss a little bit, and that's why the oil is drew out to that side, but I'm going to have to sit this separately afterwards on this wood. See if there is actually a slight bow. I really cannot tell. But that's just about done. You can see all the brown setting up in there. Last of the oil's leaking out. It's about to start smoking. Yeah, maybe the same then. Sorry, that's probably loud. I was right near the mic.
Alright. So there is smoke coming off it. So let's see how this moves. Also, it's about the same. That's that's pretty, pretty bloody good. And the oil. Yeah, dot right in the middle. I really cannot. Yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, so there's where you pay for a bit of quality. I'd say that's very, very flat, but that middle. Definitely a bit elevated. Now, if this is flat, you know, pan's flat, not the middle, then whichever side of the middle I've got it on slightly, which, so the middle is, or, oh, it wants to stay there, it's around there. So we've seen it goes these ways, let's just see if it can be led that way. Yep. Yeah. Alright, so if it goes on all four axes. Yeah, then uh, definitely raised in the middle. Just give it a little path and... All right, so there is some of the value in the better one, but still not wholly convinced that 150 bucks makes things a little bit flat. That is three different layers of metal though. There's anodized aluminium, uh, copper, and stainless steel in that. So. The value could be in that process, that could be what makes it so very flat. Next, we're going to let some sugar set on it. So straight back on the heat after that, we don't care about four minutes-ish time. I'm not going to get the timer. We're just going to go one heaps teaspoon of sugar and let that really turn to shit. This is brown sugar, CSR brand, I guess. It wouldn't be funny if it turned out sugar don't melt. I'm certain it melts, I'm certain it turns caramelized, I'm certain it sticks to everything it touches, but we're gonna find out. What I may need to do is uh, use both of these in the house, you know, cook bigger things in this, cook my omelets and <coughs> whatnot in the smaller one, and then see after maybe six months of use how they fare up, if this one is still non stick or if it has just turned to a festering garbage pile. That's not six months of that festering garbage pile, that's, that's 20 years. I cannot even see what brand it is. If you can decipher that, it smells like campfire, then, uh, then let me know. Not even say on the handle. <coughs> Pardon me. Got a bit of a sort of thing in the last few days. So once this is melted, then I'm going to swap them, do the same, but I'm going to let it solidify. And uh, as glue at that point. If I was daring enough, I'd just squeeze a tube of super glue into each. I mean, I think super glue sticks to, sticks to um, Teflon, but I know it doesn't wash off with water. Whereas if I put water in this or if I reheat it, it's going to dissolve. I can get rid of it again. So I don't throw away a perfectly good pan. Whew, that does look delicious though, doesn't it? It is just starting to burn as the last crystals melt into it. There we go. And that is the sugar starting to boil. So let's take that off. I'll sit that back down there on my trusty spare bit of wood. And then we repeat with the fry pan that's on the piss a little bit. <clears throat> or he's got a good kick in the head. All right, so that wasn't one a heap, so there's a bit more. That's about the same.
This isn't really sangria, this is just red wine and tropical juice. God damn, is it good. Off she goes. Right, can you stay there a bit? Just till you start to cook up. There we go. Getting that nice cooked sugar smell. Still on the one bit, but that's right. I think that's about as cooked as the last one. sort itself out and uh we'll give it a moment to cool down i'm going to finish watering the plants you can watch these two in real time sort themselves out Alright, so this one first, it's long enough that I can see it is hard and firm. I'm just going to use a toothpick. It's a bit tacky. Kind of see how it comes away. There is definitely some stick and some resistance there. Oh, that smells good. Now, I don't know why it's normal and not, but. Definitely seems okay with coming away. I'm getting messages. Oh, all right. So, give that a bit longer. Might even uh, give it a squirt with your oh, where have I lost it now? Water. Let's cool it down quicker. That will disperse that heat, absorb some of it. Have a look at this one. It hasn't quite been as long as oh, that is coming away quite well. Right. 
so oh yeah, they're a little bit sticking there. That's ridiculously hard to tell which is better. Let's give that a bit of the water as well. See if we can disperse some of that heat. You know what, I'll go get a few ice cubes to uh, hurl into this and something to pour the water back into. Ideally I'd leave it to sit, but I'm impatient. I ended up like cutting videos. So I'll fast track it. Interestingly, on this one here, I can see that there's a cool, so it's actually separating itself from the metal. This one's definitely cool to the touch, nearly hard. This one's definitely cooler. This conducts a bit better. This one does not appear to be moving away from the metal. Uh, I'd say sure we're just going to be sticky. I'd say they're at the same coolness. So, first of all, pour off that syrupy goodness. The same for this one. They both pour pretty good. Oh, yeah, that's that's stuck. This is that one. All right, a bit more force. This is definitely challenging to get under it. Give ourselves a good test here because uh, I'm not really sure how to get this off. It uh, definitely sticks to Teflon, I am certain of that. after that. Oh, that tastes delicious. Mmm. Mmm. Burnt caramel sugar. I'm going to have to grind that up and use it in something. Let's see if I can't do the same thing with this. Oh. Alright, where are we? 
does start coming off. It keeps coming off. It's just trying to get a grip on this smooth bitch. Oh, I'm breaking the bloody thing underneath. Uh, what have I got over here? Find a bit of plastic. Oh. oh, that went everywhere. There we go. Okay, well, it's definitely not coming off like it did on that other one. There we go. Once you get under one of the lips, I'm not going to use that. Mm. Oh, so good. Once you get under one of the lips, it's fine. No trace now. I wonder if that was just me fast tracking it. Really not sure, but I think Tom's gonna have to tell with these. Um, there's no easy way. Mm. Oh, Jesus, to test how well they're gonna stand up against someone. Do one of those IKEA tests where you make a test kitchen where you sit there, scrap the shit out of them, banging them on stuff, but that doesn't really represent real use and the washing in between and everything. So I think for now, all of that is is uh, this is definitely worth 20 bucks. Certain of that. I'm not sure if that's worth 150 bucks, but I am happy with it so far. Time will tell. Till next time.